We're looking at a VFR flight plan form, and on the lower edge of the screen you see your uh, route from Van Nuys over towards Santa Susana Pass, then Fillmore VUR, Santa Paula Airport, and we have a flyby waypoint, Lake Casitas. It's not going to show up on our flight plan, but this is something that we're going to use to, uh, um, for our orientation, make sure that we are still aware um, that uh, we're on track, um, that the winds are not off and, and blowing us in the, in the wrong direction here. And uh, going towards San Marcos VUR and then on to Santa Ines. On top here, we have um, our flight plan and our waypoints all listed. Of course, there's a whole lot more to say about getting this all figured out in regards to uh, your course, your route, your, your true course dialed in, your, your winds aloft in, tr in true direction as well, and then all your computations here with your wind correction angle, your variation, and your deviation ending up at a compass heading. What I'll concentrate on today is pretty much just the, uh, the essence and the, and the sense of all this, your computing, you estimate the time and route, how long is it going to take you from waypoint to waypoint, and total time and route is what you're interested in. And then similar to that and according to that, then uh, the fuel burn. And all those fuel, fuel burn for, for each leg, uh, the fuel used for each leg is then added up and that's the total fuel you're going to need. I'm going to go ahead and uh, point out that without noting the RPM, for each leg and the estimated gallons per hour fuel flow. This pretty much makes very little sense. This is something you're going to determine before you even leave. I have a separate video on the aircraft performance charts, cruise performance chart, where you're going to pick all those numbers and, and what, what you need to do during the flight, how you're going to handle the mixture control to actually achieve these numbers. And so everything that's shown in terms of estimated time and route and uh, fuel burn, very much dependent on the power settings you're going to choose. Next, of course, when you're departing, you're tasked to put the, uh, the time of departure uh, in, this, uh, in this top box. What we're going to need to do is when we're, when we're flying, when I need to fill in all the estimated, all time and route, all the ETA boxes need to be filled in. Otherwise, this flight plan really doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you want to know whether you're on time or you're going to be behind time be, or you're going to be, be ahead of the time. And there's really only one way to, to, to check that is if, if you have times figured out to begin with. So what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to write your time off here. You're going to be really busy during the takeoff climb. You're going to maybe have an intermediate level off. You're going to need to contact the radar controller. There's, there's a lot going on, and you might not exactly be able to, to check um, and, and, and write the forms um, by, by Santa Susana Pass. It's really only a few miles. Probably not a lot of time to do this, but probably going to do it for, for our next leg. And by that time, of course, we have estimated time our, we figured it on the ground, five minutes plus seven minutes. So here we are, we're, we're, we're cruising towards Fillmore, probably already leveled off at this point, and now we're going to write in um, that there's another 12 minutes that should have passed, and we're going to say, well, that's, uh, that's going to be 18, 12, um, an estimate. So, so estimated time of arrival in Fillmore would be around 18, 12. And we can keep writing in these numbers, and in fact, we have to keep writing in these numbers to make sure what are the different times uh, we're, we're going to be arriving at, uh, at the different waypoints. And so, so that way, we can actually determine uh, whether we're ahead of the schedule, on the schedule, and, and whether the fuel burn uh, that we figured is, is, uh, is okay. Uh, and um, you're going to keep doing that, and then, uh, and then write in the actual time of arrival every time, and, and then keep track of your fuel remaining. Naturally, if we had plenty of fuel and, and you know, we, we have uh, lots of time in the, in the tank, um, this, this exercise wouldn't be so, so, so critical. Um, but it's going to be very necessary if you're going towards the absolute top margin of your range. And if you depart with less than full fuel, which you're going to do if you're going to actually find any use for your airplane, putting maybe three people and some baggage in the airplane, well, there's no way you can be always departing at, you know, at full fuel. So you'll, you'll, be, you'll be tasked to, to figure all this out in detail 
and make sure that you have alternatives if the flight cannot be completed as planned. Have a little, have, have your reserve fuel, naturally your FAA legal reserve fuel, but you know, so, something that makes sense, they'll take you in VFR conditions to an alternate. And, uh, and that's what this flight plan is for. And uh, there's a lot more to say about this. This is just a quick overview and we'll leave it at that for now.